So, um, <laughs> hi, uh, I'm Silo, and these are my hops and barrel bites. Of course, yes. I do drink. I'm not gonna hide that. I'm not ashamed, even. But yes, I drink. Drink is nice. It is nice. Ooh, you've asked a very conundrum question um, because it ranges based on how I feel. So if one day I'm feeling about whining and dining, I'll order myself a glass of wine. Glass. Which would be Chardonnay or um, Sweet Red. But if I'm feeling a bit groovy, I'd order myself something like gin and tonic. Or if I'm just feeling a bit classy, I'll order myself champagne, darling. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> on, when did I start drinking? When I, was I introduced to drinking? So let me just sort of paraphrase it. So my introduction to drinking came, I was, yes, underage. My we first, all were, don't worry. Anyway, my, my first drink was, it was Kronberger. Wine. It was wine. You in, 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 that you know, the voluptuous <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I was like preteens, I don't even know what you know voluptuous meant. But um I, I I can feel I can say it felt like I was exploring, I was like on a high, I was flying. Um it was quite exciting actually. <laughs> Literally it felt like I was flying. Um I, I don't know what it meant back then because geez, I was what 11, 12. But it was under, I can say, supervised drinking in a way, in terms of um, it was provided to me by. It was by supervised with at eleven or twelve. Imagine. Like I'm saying, it was provided to myself by an adult. But I think in in, in that way, it was more of a, an introduction to what would sort of follow through, um, because it was more of a way of you know what, let me, as an adult, I want to put it that way. I'm not gonna say which adult. But rather than let you experience whatever it is that you're going to have anyways via peer pressure by myself. So um, I experienced that high, that flying, that everything within that time frame. Um, and not to say that I, well, I took the rest upon myself to sort of find out the, the hardship self, everything else. Okay. But I can say my first was... Yo. <laughs> um, if I can say my best alcohol experience, I would only relate it now today to the people that I actually hang around with. And if we can all sort of vibe to the same thing based on the effects of the alcohol itself. Um, it doesn't have to be something that's based on what you, your background, whatever your, your environmental things were back whenever, how old you were that brought you up to where you are now. But I guess, if anything, it's one thing that sort of brings everyone together and makes people share openly. Um, I think alcohol in that way sort of taps into people's subconscious. Whether they, you know, are willing to share the moment in time, but it sort of makes people relax into that subconscious of theirs so that they can actually relay certain things that they wouldn't otherwise share with anyone else. So, I feel based on the people that you share your alcoholic experiences with, or would you choose to share your alcoholic experiences with, based on the vibe that you have those people when you are sober, you are still willing to actually tap into that subconscious of yourself with those same people and trying to get into or tap into whatever they're willing to share with you in their alcohol subconscious. That was the most profound answer <laughs> we've had on this segment, man. <laughs> Oh. Don't ever have tequila. Mm. Why? It'll black you out from everything. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Hey, this? you know the pictures, the pictures that people will take of you, especially of tequila involved. You won't even think like, no man, I don't remember this because that's the thing, you won't remember it. So I would say take your tequila shot when you are at home. 
in your wine rack, but you have your own tequila rack. But just slot it in there just when you're feeding on your, your low days. But just take it when you're at home and you make sure that you're not going anywhere else or wanting to be anywhere else with anyone. That's what that's the best advice I can last in my tequila. Hey, I've been there. And I thought I was, you know, but tequila. It depends. Um, I used to drink. Are you okay? You know what? Honestly, looking back on my previous years, um, based on situations perhaps that I was going through at the moment in time, I can say that yes, I yo, I had my my own episode seasons, you could call it, where I'd be drinking whatever it is that I was drinking. But to come to this point in my life where I am now. I can say that I can choose my preferred drink and stand to that. That's why I can say there's only like possibly three drinks, like I'm telling you now. It's either wine, champagne, or gin and tonic. Yes, the occasional one shot of tequila, should I feel like it, depending on the vibe. But I think I've grown from where I was, from when I was younger, back then, to where I am now. And in that sense, I've sort of grown as a human being, as a person, individual to where I am now. So yeah. I can't say and say wholeheartedly what kind of a drunk I am. Yes, I was a hectic drinker back then. But compared to what I used to drink then and what I don't drink now, like I said, um, wine wasn't even something I used to drink back then. But like age, it's an acquired taste. <laughs> nice one. Oh, oh God. Oh, like if you feel like with God, I you know you got the, I know what it feels like to be on top of the world and stuff. Like I'd also had those moments where like, hey, I'm on the freeway, I'm driving, I'm on top of the world, I'm this it girl, but don't come to me with your drunkenness. Because I've never imposed my drunkenness on anyone else. That's the thing. Even back way back when, when I used to really drink. But even now with my sort of cutting down on stuff, hey, I used to drink like oh, the whiskeys, the, 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 the vodkas, the everything. But considering my limited, what I choose to drink now, um, if anything that anyone can do right now is just to respect another person's choice, um, how you may be feeling at the moment in time may not necessarily be receptive of the other person. So don't come to another person, particularly myself, when you are spending a beer, which I used to drink also, but don't come to me with that. You used to drink everything. Hey, hey. I think it was Hansa, the kiss. <laughs> but not to say that I, I, um, he's not in a taste that I won't, you know, be able to <laughs> sort of punch it down. But I think I've grown from what I used to drink before to what I am now, and based on the phase of my life then, but the one thing that you can respect another person is don't come to them with your drunken state of mind expect another person to be receptive of it as if they are on the same level as you are. So if you are drunk now, drink what you were drinking before to get out of it. We totally I approve this message. We approve this message. <laughs> I can't say. Have you had gin? Yeah. 43. Uh, it depends what kind of gin we're talking about. All of them. The, <sighs> the weakest they go is 35, the strongest they go is 43 point I had, something. I had a friend of mine buy me, like it was, um, it wasn't distilled gin. It was like last year. But I drank it, like it didn't. It didn't do much because the thing is, for me, with the gin, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to drink it every single day. Because like I'm saying, I have my variety of what I feel like when I feel like drinking it. So I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm ginning, I'm ginning, I'm ginning, I'm ginning, I'm ginning with a pen and bottle. No, I'll be like, okay, today, what's in my wine rack? My wine rack is very... Mind you, wine rack is stuck with either gin, wine, or my champagne confidence, the cork, but it's in the fridge. So it depends how I feel. So I'd have like gin sitting there like now for days on end, months on end, weeks on end, but I'd be just doing myself with other things. 
like my champagne. So you can't like actually say I can't really say. Highest. Yeah, like it depends how I feel. And it's not every day that I actually drink. So it depends how I feel, what I'm in the mood for, if I'm willing to smoke my own um, happily at that point in time. I wouldn't smoke with champagne or my wine. But it's seldom with champagne or wine, it's always drink. Once again, I am Silo and these were my hops and barrels. Anything else I'm missing? Bites.